Hey, what up everyone? Corey Taylor here from Slipknot and Stone Sour and you are watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gurhamid here for Loudwire and this is Wikipedia Fact or Fiction, an episode you have been asking for for such a long time. Mr. Corey Taylor of Slipknot and Stone Sour flipping you off and flipping off no, Wikipedia. No, it's the metal dog. Oh. See? That's cute. It's the metal dog. All right. I'm bringing it back. I don't <laughs> think it ever was a thing, but I'm, I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it to the forefront. That's right. Cool. So, looked up a bunch of stuff on Wikipedia. I uh, yourself. Can't wait to hear what you et found. <laughs> We're going to prove what's right and what's wrong. Okay. From you, which is, I believe, a credible source. All right. Feed me. All right. Uh, first of all, your name, Corey Todd Taylor. Yes, I'm glad somebody changed that because originally it, it was to be Corey wrong? Josh Taylor. Corey Josh I'm like, Taylor. I'm like, what? Mm. It's on my fucking driver's license, for God's <laughs> sakes. Figure it out. I, that kind of makes me happy that they yeah. got it wrong oh, first. It's, it's so painful. It's, okay. All right. Give me. Give me. Also known as the Great Big Mouth, Faith. Okay. Faith. No. I didn't like, think so. Was, <laughs> it was part of a conversation that got printed in Muse News. Like... Yeah. Years ago, which it was a local paper in Des Moines, like 20 years ago. Okay. And it, I don't know why, but it's been copied and pasted everywhere. <laughs> I've never been fucking called Faith. It's so stupid. Okay, that one's wrong. The Sickness. Sure. Todd Tigger. Yes, yes. <laughs> that would be my middle name and my first pet's name. So, uh, okay. And uh, I, I, I may or may not have engaged in... Was never yeah, like, oh, let's not go there. So stupid. <laughs> uh, the Boogie Night. Absolutely. Which we've seen. With a and, K. Yes. And Neck. Kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> it right. should have surround sound at this point. <laughs> uh, it says uh, early on, you lived with, uh, in Orlando, briefly with your uncle, George Robson, though you were mostly raised by your mother in Waterloo, Iowa, in an old dilapidated farmhouse. Okay, let's just back up to Orlando right. and this person named George Robson. Your uncle, apparently. Mm, somebody's uncle, not mine. No, fiction. Not one that. drop of that is true. What? I, I lived in West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. I have never lived in Orlando. I do not have an uncle named George <laughs> Robson, and I did not live in Florida with an aunt or an uncle. My mom, my sister and I, and my mom's boyfriend moved there for about a year or so when I okay. was like be between fourth and fifth grade. In fact, I didn't finish fourth grade because of, because of the way we moved. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Half of that is true. I don't, where do they find But I did, I did live in Waterloo for about five years. In an old dilapidated farmhouse? Well, at one point. Yeah. At one point, I mean, point, I lived okay. in eight different places in, in Waterloo. Ah, yeah. okay. We, we moved around a lot, mainly because we couldn't pay the rent. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, it says you developed a fond feeling towards classic rock after your grandma introduced you to it. Sure. It's the no. most general <laughs> statement. There wasn't a moment My where... grandmother played Elvis for me. Okay. Um, so I got into yeah, Elvis and Jim Reeves. I don't know if she was a huge Boston fan or anything oh, like that. Right. I'd, she'd probably tell you Boston was a city, not a band. But ah. I mean, it's who the fuck writes these? I don't know. Really? That's why we do it. All right. Hey, this is why we do it. <laughs> this is why we do it. <laughs> yeah, dude, do yeah. it. Uh, by age 15, said you had developed a drug addiction and had overdosed on cocaine twice. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, okay. I started doing coke when I was, well, I started smoking weed when I was 12. Mm, um, okay. Started smoking cigarettes when I was 10. Um, started, yeah, I started doing coke and speed when I was about 13. By the time I was 15, uh, I had OD twice. I actually, I woke up in a dumpster because uh, I was at a party and I, I guess I OD'd. Um, and instead of taking me to the hospital, they, they threw me in a dumpster. So I kind of woke up, and I think because of that, it jostled my system and actually kind of helped me survive, and I woke wow. up, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I went back to my house, and shortly after that, we went to visit my grandmother in Des Moines, and I ended up staying and never going back, so. Oh, okay. Pretty so crazy. 
that kind of goes <coughs> into the next one here. It's a you later set out on your own and ended up at your grandmother's trailer in Ohio. And it says she took legal custody okay, of you. Okay, so freeze. Ohio? Ohio. My grandmother's never lived in a trailer. She's had the same house for 40 years. In Iowa? Actually, more than 40 years. In Iowa. Iowa, yes. Yeah. Not Idaho, not Ohio, <laughs> Iowa. It's on a fucking map, people. Come on, it's not that hard. Oh boy, Continue. all right. She took legal custody of you. Yeah. Okay. So I could go to, so, so I could go to school. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that gotcha. was the only reason, yeah. And helped you buy musical equipment. She did, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sad to say that I still owe my grandmother oh. quite a bit of money. Oh. But at the same time, I, I think I've paid her back because I've, I've helped her out over the years with, with a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I mean, just in the platinum plaques alone, I think she's mm. she's like she's we're got fine. a few of those. We're fine. Oh yeah. I used to get I used to get my grandmother a copy with with every one that we would get. Oh and wow. And then it suddenly her house was full of them, and she's like, "You can stop now <laughs> because I have nowhere else to put them." She's still got a stack in one of her spare bedrooms. She's wow. just like, "I don't know where to put this. I'm putting glasses on it for it's ridiculous." So she's still around. Oh yeah. That's yeah. awesome. My grandmother is 88. And will be 89 oh, wow. this year, and uh, still works. She worked for 25 years at one place, retired, took a year off, got bored, went back to work. She's been working there for 24 years. <laughs> wow. She's a fucking maniac. You wonder where I get it? My grandmother, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and up and, and still basically drives herself off and on, even though wow. she has to work, walk with a cane and a, or, or a walker sometimes, yeah. She was so pissed uh, that she had to give up bowling because of her legs. <laughs> she was mad, dude. I mean, this is a oh. woman who's got stacks of trophies. Like, she was on a league for years. She used to take me out with her on the road when she would go and play, like, do, like, leagues in, like, different cities and shit. Damn. My grandmother's fucking rad, dude. So you witnessed this. Oh, yeah. Oh. Saw it, man. She could roll. She could roll. She could roll the pill. It was nice. She had a good curve. Yeah. Beautiful. That's awesome. I'm glad she's still around. Yeah, she's fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, to in your early 20s, when you were living with your gram, uh, you attempted suicide by way of overdose. Um, your grandmother drove you to the hospital in Des Moines, which is in Iowa, not Ohio. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, the doctors resuscitated you, and you described this as the lowest point in your life. Yeah, it was pretty low. Um, and, you know, obviously, well, it was, I was 18 going on 19. Um, okay. So it was a little earlier than that. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I swallowed a bunch of pills and my ex-girlfriend's mother came to check on me, found me, took me to the hospital. They fed me Ipecac. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, for about five years, I couldn't eat pancakes because Ipecac <laughs> tastes like maple syrup and because it, it induces vomiting yes. quite readily. There was no way I was eating pancakes for a while. But then they give you this liquid charcoal that yes. soaks up your stomach and, and gets you to settle down. So I was laying, I was laying in the hospital. My grandma came and got me, and then she brought me home. She was very, I'm obviously very disappointed. And I kind of laid on the couch for a while, and the VMAs were on. And wait, do you remember what year? Uh, it was '91, I think. '90 or '91. Okay. It was the year that Faith and More first played, and it was ep they played Epic, and it awesome. was awesome amazing and it kind of re-energized my whole will to make music like they were so good and they were so powerful and it was so different than anything I'd ever seen you know that they really kind of got me up off, off my ass and that's when I started writing again started kind of you know making music again so wow. if it wasn't for faith no more I wouldn't be here well thank you boys uh, it says you met your father for the first time as an adult yeah. and that you... I was 30. 30, okay. Yeah. You now have a relationship with him, although you've said your paths do not cross all that often. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he has his own life, I have mine. Um, yeah. We, you know, we touch base, you know, it's, he's very much like me, you know, like it's, sometimes it's just, I'm one of those people who's very comfortable in his own skin. Like, I don't need a lot of company. I don't need a lot of anything. You know, I can kind sure. of do my own thing and be all right. And he's kind of the same way. So every once in a while, you know, we kind of touch base and, and make sure everybody's good. And, you know, toes and fingers are all accounted for. <laughs> and other than that, you know, it's all good. Cool. 
Uh, it says that, you know, it, with past alcohol abuse problems, uh, yeah. your wife at the time, Scarlett, helped you through uh, tremendously, as well as keeping you from committing suicide. Uh, you said that, it said, rather, that you had attempted to jump off an eighth floor balcony of the Hyatt on Sunset Boulevard in 2003, but somehow she stopped you. But then there's a contradiction that says uh, your friend Tom Hazard stopped Tom you. Tom Hazard. Tom yeah, Hazard. Biggie T. Yeah. If he hadn't grabbed me by the shirt, I would be a splatter on the, uh, on the pavement. So, yeah. so it was him who physically him, stopped yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I woke up the next day and I was like, I'm, I'm done. You know, that, that was the first time, like, I really committed myself to, to cleaning up. You yes. Know? And I was, I was clean for about three years, it started drinking again for maybe three years, and then I quit again about six years ago, and I've been, I've been clean ever since, so.